All right, so last couple topics that we need to go through uh, deal with basically like not motion in a straight line, but motion either that's turning around in a continuous circle or that is simply spinning in place. So slightly two different things. Just make sure you understand the difference between um, orbital motion versus rotational motion. So the Earth does both. The Earth spins and it orbits around in a big path. So uniform circular motion deals with orbital motion, uh, rotational dynamics, uh, dealing with things such as your moment of inertia uh, and, and your angular velocity, that deals with rotational dynamics. So before we go further, let's just assume, let's make some basic kind of assumptions here. Let's say we have some object which is moving in a big circle. So we have a radius of R, so the object is right there. And let's say at some given instant, its instantaneous velocity is V. Now, now, just for sake of ease, let's assume that the radius of that object is not changing here. And let's say that over a given amount of time, this object here moves at whatever velocity, whether it's changing or not, from their initial spot there to their final spot here. So I'm going to label this displacement, at least if, they, if they're uh, making a big arcing circle around here, I'm going to label the arc length specifically as delta s. So this is the cumulative length they have, they have traversed around the outside of the circle. And then at the same time, I'm going to label this as delta theta, the angle they have traversed. Now, here's a nice easy way to connect those two variables. If you're working in radians, for angles, which in these in, in these situations you need to be doing working in radians, um, you can always uh, connect the, dis the the arc length displacement to this, the angular displacement, by this formula here. The angular, sorry, the, the arc length or the linear displacement around the outside of the circle is simply however far their angle changed, again that has to be in radians, times the radius r. Now, there's a really easy way to see why this must be true. And I'm just going to kind of briefly sketch this out. I'm going to use the bottom half of this triangle here. So let's say that we measure this radius to the center, and I didn't quite draw it properly, but let's say we measure the radius to the center here, and I'm going to label it as, I'll say big R just to, to avoid a little bit of confusion here, but it doesn't matter. So I'm, I'm going to label the radius as big R. Now, let's say we start right there. And let's say we traverse that exact distance, big R, around the outside. So if this is uh, three inches, let's say we walk three inches around the outside of the circle. I'm going to move that just a tad. I, I know where I want to end up, kind of. So I think if you were to measure those two distances, though, they're very similar there. So in this case here, turns out that if the radius, if the distance from the center to the outside is R, and if they walk a distance of are around the outside, this angle here is, I'm going to label it like that, one, not I, but uh, one radian. And I'm going to draw it slightly differently. It's one radius of distance. If they walk a distance equivalent to the radius around the outside, the angle they have subtended, delta theta, is one radian of angle. Now, if they walk a distance, and I'll draw it like this, starting there, if they walk a distance of 2r, if they walk two radiuses around the outside, any guess what angle they have subtended now? In this case here, delta theta will be two radiuses, or I'll write it two radians, two rads. That one's bad. All right, now let's say they walk around a distance equal to three radiuses. So in that case there, and now if you were to do that R, 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 you're going to find that the total distance they have walked from, or the total angle subtended, delta theta, in this case, delta theta is one radius, two radius, three radiuses are on the outside. So therefore the angle is one radian, two radians, three radians. Is that kind of making sense? And, and I encourage you to like literally like, you know, maybe if you already get it, like wait until you have kids or something, but have them like, you know, cut out, you know, a circle and then cut out little pieces of string 
equal to the distance there and see how many pieces of string they can stack around the outside. I guarantee you, if they do it reasonably well, you can measure pi to within about one sig fig. It, it, it's awesome to be able to do because, and, and I've done this in class a few times on a big whiteboard. If you, it, I've made a radius equal to a circle with a radius of one meter and I've traced around the edge around the side here and it is almost always going to be, and it, literally every time I've done this, it's between about 3.12 to 3.16 meters. Like literally I can get it within two centimeters each time. So isn't that kind of a cool view of how radians work and how they're related to the radius of the circle? Um, for whatever reason, maybe it's because I didn't take pre-calc, <laughs> uh, but I never quite understood what a radius, what a radian is. So that's what it is. All right, so anyway, uh, let's get rid of all that crap. Okay, so I've gone ahead and redrawn the circle here, and here was our relationship between the linear variable, linear displacement, and our angular variable, angular displacement. Um, and by the way, the word we use for this is subtended, radian subtended. And I've been using that, but I just want to make that clear. So distance covered, radian subtended. Now, let's go ahead and say that if you have some change in angle, delta theta, we're just simply going to define some angular velocity as how many radians per second we traverse. So I'll write this just to the right here. We're, we always give the label omega, and omega, I'll use the calculus version, d theta dt. So this is our defining um, uh, equation for angular velocity. We measure it in radians per second. And then now I'm assuming that we're, we're going to be taking the calculus version of this equation here. You take the time limit to zero. But if you divide both sides by delta t and then take the limit as t approaches zero, distance per time is just simply linear velocity, v. And then r is assumed to be a constant. So delta theta over delta t, or d theta dt, is exactly what we call omega. So just simply dividing this equation by delta t and taking the limit gives us our second equation. Our angular velocity in radians per second is directly related to our linear velocity in meters per second. And now finally, if we similarly define our angular acceleration, alpha, to be our change in angular velocity with time, d theta, or sorry, d omega dt. Same thing. Now we take the derivative, or sorry, the, the um, we divide both sides by, uh, we take the oh, geez, time derivative of both sides. That's what I mean to say. The left-hand side clearly becomes um, your linear acceleration, a, meters per second squared, feet per minute squared, whatever. And then on the right-hand side, the time derivative, if the radius is constant, is simply r alpha. So these are the, the essentially the five underlying equations that you have to deal with when you're dealing with angular motion. Now, uh, the connections between these are quite simple. And I will say, um, I had a job interview uh, straight out of undergrad at a literally a, 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 a helicopter company. And so clearly you can imagine if you have like rotors that are spinning, this type of stuff comes up like from day one. And um, part of the interview that I did not do as well as I would have liked was applying these, these calculations to see what if your rotor breaks off at a given speed, how far is it going to fly through the air? Um, and I think in retrospect, I think I mixed up I, I exchanged the V and the W in my head while I was doing this on the spot in the interview. Um, either way, uh, it's, it's this kind of a good handy chart to keep in mind to be able to, to, to transform from linear to angular variables and back. Um, one, other, one other thing to note, this often comes up when you have like rolling motion when there's a wheel rolling around the ground. Now, the nice thing to know is that if you actually, if this literally is representing a wheel that's rolling on the ground, if that wheel happens to be spinning at a certain rate omega, and it has a given radius r, that whatever velocity the center of the wheel is going at, whatever velocity the axle, we'll call that v, is precisely the velocity that the edge of the wheel is going around in a circle relative to the center. So for example, if, you were, if you're riding a bike and if you're measuring how fast the edge of your tire is going relative to you, that's gonna be precisely the same thing as how fast the ground is going relative to you, if that makes sense. So rolling motion, the tangential velocity at the edge of the circle is the same as your linear velocity 
of the entire thing. Okay, so given that, uh, we have these couple of basic variables of, kin uh, of angular kinematics. Let's apply them to the variables of, uh, sorry, the equations of angular kinematics now. Okay, so what I want to do here is we're going to take the four equations of linear kinematics that, that we've already gone through, and we're just going to make some very simple uh, 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 rearrangements here. And so let's go ahead and just draw the first uh, linear equation up. Sorry, equation of linear kinematics, I mean. Uh, v equals v naught plus a t. Now, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to divide both sides. I'm sorry, I'm going to, yeah, divide both sides by r. So if I divide that by r, if I divide the right side by r, each of these becomes a, a, a something divided by r, clearly. Now, if you look back at our previous definition, our linear velocity here is related to our angular velocity omega. And if you do the you know, proper division, you see that this is just the same thing as omega, our final angular velocity omega. This, our linear velocity divided by r, is just the same thing as initial angular velocity. And then finally, a over r, right here from this equation, is just simply alpha t. So we have a new equation based on our linear um, our, our linear motion equation of now an angular motion equation. And it turns out the other three equations are exactly the same. Our second equation, originally we had a displacement, so we can say that. Um, I think I, I'll write it slightly differently. Delta theta, or our change in angle, is whatever our initial angle was, but I'm going to absorb that in the left-hand side. Plus omega naught t plus one-half alpha t squared. Notice how I'm literally just replacing the original linear motion variable with the angular one. Delta x goes to delta theta. V naught goes to omega naught, and so on. And then the other two, I'll just write them up real quickly here. So I think that's right. Um, now, again, literally all I'm, all I'm doing in my head is just replacing the angular variable with the linear one, or vice versa. And then you can now make that exact same chart that I typically make for the linear kinematics. Um, uh, equations, and let's get rid of that because that is very much not an angular kinematics equation. But you can do exactly the same procedure, and it turns out that essentially any angular kinematics problem that you're going to encounter, you, um, there's something rolling at a given speed, or, or, or a wheel is spinning at a given speed, it experiences some angular acceleration for a time, you can always find one of these four equations that should allow you to solve that with one step only instead of having to solve that for a given variable and then plug into that for another variable. So these are the basic variables of angular kinematics. And again, make sure that you're used to working in, in radians because that is how we typically deal with these. Uh, it's the most natural set of units for us to use. So uh, given that, let's talk uh, real quickly about what happens if we're going in a, in a circle and specifically if we keep our angular velocity omega the same. That's what we deal with when, when we have uniform circular motion.